This video is brought to you by Nebula. The UK is a pretty weird place. You need a license to watch TV, the monarch owns all the swans, there's a place called Barton in the Beans, and this guy runs an online news network. This weirdness though extends also to our political system, with a number of quirks from hundreds of years ago persisting to this very day. So in this video we're going to have a look through a few of these, explaining how they came about and how they still function today. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Much of the weirdness in our political traditions comes from the simple fact that our system is truly just very, very old. Our political system has developed slowly since around the 13th century, when barons and knights advised the monarch to the system that we know today. With this, practices and traditions developed, and while some of the more important ones have been modernised to work in the 21st century, some have been kept as is. And to be fair, it's easy to understand why. If these traditions and practices aren't too important, then the weirdness of them gives the Westminster system a bit of charm, while also reflecting its long history. So let's get into some of the weird political traditions an MP might come across on a typical day in Parliament. Now, starting the day, an MP might decide to go to the cloakroom. It's the UK after all, and the vast likelihood is that it's been raining. Upon hanging up their coat, they might notice a small ribbon. Now, this isn't purely decorative. It's actually there for an MP to hang their swords up. After all, it's well known that MPs aren't allowed to bring their swords into the House of Commons. There's even a rumour that the lines that MPs must stand behind when debating the House of Commons chamber are deliberately designed to be two sword lengths apart, in order to prevent particularly aggressive parliamentarians from resorting to duelling. However, some actually think this theory is unlikely, because, as we stated earlier, swords are banned, and have been in the House of Commons for centuries. Anyway, once the business of swords is dealt with, an MP might decide that the next best thing to do is source some snuff. As most of our viewers were born in either the 20th or 21st century, and not the 18th or 19th, it's likely that many of you don't actually know what snuff is. Effectively, it's a form of tobacco that snorted rather than smoked. This was introduced in Parliament in 1694, when smoking was banned in the Commons. As such, a doorkeeper ensures that the so-called parliamentary snuff box is always stocked with snuff from a local tobacconist. The current box was created in 1943 from a doorframe that was blown apart by a German bomb, and has had inscribed on the lid all of the principal doorkeepers since its creation. However, despite its fancy design, if our hypothetical MP were to take up their entitlement to free snuff, this would make them the first MP to do so in decades. A Freedom of Information request from 2010 found that the last time an MP used the box was all the way back in 1989. So perhaps our MP will give snuff a miss, and instead make their way to the green benches so that they can start doing the work of representing the constituents that elected them. Now, if they want to guarantee themselves a space on the famous green benches that day, then they'll need to reserve a seat, because despite there being 650 elected MPs, the benches can actually only seat 427 of them. This design, along with the fact that the benches are designed to be facing each other, deliberately makes the chamber seem more full, more heated, and more adversarial. There was a moment when this could have been changed though, as we mentioned more offhandedly than we probably should have earlier, the House of Commons was hit by a German bomb during the Second World War, and was set to be rebuilt. The then Prime Minister Winston Churchill had the option to change the design of the chamber and make it less adversarial, perhaps by making it bigger and opting for a semicircular design, something that parliaments around the world were adopting at the time. He decided not to, and rebuilt it pretty much as it used to be. So MPs still have to cram into the chamber. But how would our MP reserve their seat? Well, they do this by attending morning prayers and filling out a prayer card. This is one of the only ways to reserve a seat, and can be important on days when high-profile debates are scheduled. Regardless, assuming that our MP does get a seat booked, they may go off to their parliamentary office to get some constituency work done while they wait for their debates. Their office may be located in the Palace of Westminster or the adjacent Portcullis House, which is attached to the palace via an underground tunnel that goes under the road. If this is the case, then our MP needs to be informed of any votes happening in the chamber, so that they can rush back in time for their vote to be counted. Lucky for them, around the whole parliamentary estate, bells and TVs are installed that light up and inform members that their presence is required in the chamber. 
These bells were even installed in popular pubs, such as the Red Lion around Westminster, just in case MPs had slunk off for a cheeky mid-afternoon pint. Many of these now, though, don't work. So our MP has at least some reminders of votes, but it's worth remembering that these votes only happen when Parliament is in session. Parliament often closes for a number of weeks through the year, with the recess dates aligning roughly with school holidays. It's also closed, though, for the period of prorogation, which is officially the period between the end of a parliamentary session and the King's Speech, which officially starts the next parliamentary session. Now, the King's Speech is a pretty unique event. Essentially, the monarch sits in the House of Lords and reads a speech written by the government, announcing their policies for the next session. This is one of the only situations where MPs are allowed to sit in the House of Lords, but can only do so after being invited. This is when one of the weirdest parts of the day happens. In essence, a person with the title of Black Rod, who is responsible for controlling access to the House of Lords, goes to the House of Commons chamber to summon MPs for the speech. As they get to the door, the door is deliberately slammed in their face, which is done to symbolise the Commons' independence. As with many things listed in this video, it probably isn't essential to the day-to-day -day functioning of Parliament, but it has become an iconic quirk in the British political system. But what do you think? Are these the weirdest political processes and traditions? Have we missed anything big? Let us know in the comments below. That's not the end of this story either, so if you want to dive deeper into this and other stories, we have an exciting announcement. That's because it was revealed, in Variety no less, that we're building a new product with our partners at Nebula, called Nebula News. Let me explain this exciting announcement. In an increasingly polarised and confusing world, it's hard to find news that matters and that you can trust. So every day, the TLDR team curates a selection of videos that matter most in the world right now, handpicking a feed of content which should keep you up to date with everything you need. That means no more overwhelming feeds of news coverage, and instead just the stories that matter most. Videos produced by the brilliant creators on Nebula and curated by the TLDR team. It's truly the easiest way for you to keep on top of the news that matters to impress at your next wedding, dinner party, or whatever your life entails. It's not just curated news content brought to you directly by us. Nebula also features exclusive original content. That's things like Real Life Law's brand new series War Room, which every month runs you through a whole load of ongoing conflicts, keeping you in the loop. You can also watch every TLDR video on Nebula ad-free, and in many instances, before they land on YouTube. Now, if you're already subscribed to Nebula, you can find the brand new Nebula news section at nebula.tv forward slash news, and be sure to bookmark or save that link so you can use it as your TLDRified news homepage. If you're not a member already, then click the link in the description to sign up now. If you do, you'll get 40% off an annual plan by using our link. That's less than £2 a month. Plus, Nebula will know that you came from us, which really helps us out. Thanks for your support, especially when we're doing something so big and new. And we hope you love Nebula News.